Welcome back to the channel. This morning we're doing a really quick warm up of a bird. I can't remember which one I was doing. Let's go ahead and open Photoshop really quick. I like using Photoshop because of the brush rendering engine as well as the capability of the program. I can transfer it among different uh, file formats and different programs and so on and so forth. So, file new. Let's do. 12, hmm, 12 by 10, 10 by 12, and we're going to do it on a toned background. A little bit warmer, a little bit browner. Okay, and create. So, here we go. Let's add a layer over here on the right hand side. So, for those of you who have landed on my channel and you're looking to learn how to draw a bird this is a great place to be this channel has a lot of content we're talking like 500 videos it goes from cartoons to traditional to digital to ipad to different you know different uh digital illustration formats uh, environments and um you know, learning the program Photoshop, learning some of the other programs, Sketchbook Pro, Illustrator, ZBrush, stuff like that. There's a lot of content on this channel. So what you just saw me do is something that is kind of the baseline of what you need to kind of understand and know about Photoshop. You know, Photoshop is one of those programs that basically is like a Swiss Army knife. It's a, it's a huge tool belt of different things. And I like using Photoshop. Uh, primarily for illustration purposes and you know quick photo editing obviously it does a lot <laughs> um, and you know getting that baseline of understanding uh, is something that's very important and I have a couple videos teaching that so I'll, I'll put the links down in the description if you're if you're interested um, so uh, what kind of a bird did I want hold on Okay, let's go here, because I have a whole archive uh, of courses. So let's go down here to Animal Reference. I believe, let me see, what do I have? Is it the Palm Warbler or the Savannah Sparrow? Okay, so today I'm going to be drawing the Savannah Sparrow. These particular images um, that I have, and I'm going to go ahead and drag over my reference. Whoops. Where did it go? There it is. There's my reference. I like the pose of this as well as that that stick that kind of divides the upper and lower half of the page. I'm not going to uh, draw like super hyper realistic. I'm going to have a little bit of stylization going on. So as I lose my reference, where did my reference go? There it is. Okay, transfer to the other monitor that I have in front of me. So let's go ahead and file save as. We're going to do a really quick sketch. So that means I'm going to be drawing as fast as I normally draw. So let's go ahead as normal. Let's go to the sketches. The sketches. Where are we at? The sketches. So videos. Let's go to warm up. Okay. Bird. Bird. <clears throat> okay. I like having it in a in a in a large. Uh, my screen is about 24 inches diagonally, so I've got a lot of real estate. So I get some people asking me, "What uh, you know? What what's your favorite tablet? What's your favorite this? What's your favorite that?" I use a lot of tablets. I use a lot of, um, and I say a lot. You know, I've got two PCs. I've got uh, my iPad, um, and you know, whenever it comes to tablets, I've reviewed a lot of tablets, so I have a lot of tablets on hand. Um, but mostly what I usually draw on is going to be my 24 inch XP pen um, 
tablet that's in front of me. I, I used Waka for a long time, and just because of budget constraints and everything, I went with an XP pen, and honestly, I, I really can't tell the difference uh, in, in quality nowadays, since most of them are like 8,000 levels of burns of sensitivity, you know, yada, yada, yada. So, and, and again, it's just a tool. Uh, I also do traditional. If you look behind me, you see my desk full of traditional stuff right there, if the light isn't blinding you too bad. So, let's go ahead and get couple of marks on the page here. You're going to see me glance over to the right hand side just for visual reference. Now, whenever I start an image like this, I always like to have a rough sketch, a gesture that really brings me into the fold, helps me get that roadmap, that understanding and, and develop the shape language that I'm trying to establish for you know this particular uh, image. So if we look, As I completely messed that up, let's go back up. And with Photoshop, this current iteration of Photoshop, you can multiple levels of undo. So basically, I've got this big circular shape, and I've got the wings that come out, and I've got that foot here that is stretched out. That's what the bulk of his weight is on. And then I've got this other foot that kind of comes here, and then Again, you see how simple this is? I'm not going in and, and putting in details yet. I'm putting in those simple shapes, those simple forms, not forms, the simple lines that help define, uh, you know, define the image later. And what's great about drawing in general, especially at this stage, is you can have a little bit of fun. You can mess up. Oh my gosh, it's a black line. In digital illustration, obviously, I can get rid of that really quickly. Um, but again, what's really cool about in this stage is I can just, you know, if I want to make make the bird's chest a little bit bigger, maybe he's been working out. You know, if I'm doing if I'm doing a cartoon or stylized version, I can do pretty much whatever I want. You know, don't be a quote unquote, and this is, you know, I've heard this over and over again. Don't be a uh, a slave to your reference. And that means don't sit there and, and you have to stress out and, and be so stressed out about getting everything correct. You know, I'm putting in simple shapes. Again, it's that roadmap. It's that, you know, drawing, uh, that drawing roadmap that helps define what you're doing, you know, and how this particular bird is positioned. And we might even have some fun with it, you know? And that's what's really cool. Again, about drawing, you can have so much fun. Um, here, here's one of the things that I think is really, how do I put it? Whenever a teacher starts teaching you, a lot of times they'll just sit there and draw in front of you. And the expectancy is for you to get it, right? As long as I'm showing you how I do it, that means you're going to get it. And honestly, that's that's really short-sightedness of the teacher because everybody learns at a different pace. And even though I might be getting it, um, and, and the guy next to me might be getting it, I could sit there. I remember being so frustrated watching uh, somebody do you know digital illustration because they're like, I do this, 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 and this, and then you, know, you open the file, and all the language was something I didn't understand. And I'm like, I have no idea what DPI is. I have no idea what any of that is. So for me to be sitting here doing this, I have to think about how you're looking at it, right? How you're perceiving this. So to go back to my reference, um, let's do this. So if we look, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit on this. Ah! So you see how I have this general shape right here, how it comes up and around, okay? And then what I'm doing is I'm putting in like little uh, map markers. You know how whenever you are looking for something or you have a, uh, a place you need to go, you'll put a little pin. So I put little mental pins, like I'll have the corner of this mouth and I'll reference the eye. How far away is this corner of the mouth from this eye? How far is, you know, the top of this in relationship to the top of the eye. So I'll have these markers, these landmarks that help define and help me position where things are in the creation of the concept sketch. So like I just said, like we have the corner of the mouth, 
right? And it goes to the bottom of the eye. So obviously I have to change that. But then you have the top of this and it goes to the top of that. So, you know, even, you know, that's what I'll do. I'll sit there and I'll cross reference with the image that I'm using um, to create my image. And I'll sit there and I'll, I'll balance it and I'll kind of go back and forth. So let's go ahead and put that back up there. Let's go back to the eye. Let's go with a big eraser. So then, here, watch. So I'll have this come up. There's the top of his eye. And here's the corner. You saw that I draw, I drew this line right here. And then you have this other feather line that comes up here. And then here's the corner of the mouth. And this comes up and down. Here's that corner. And distance-wise, see, I've been I've been drawing a while, so I, I kind of have an understanding of how the shape of eyes are. You know, your basic, you have your round eyeball, and then you have all these, you know, lids. You have the lid, upper and lower lid. Here's the highlight. Here's the pupil and the iris. So whenever I'm drawing, I'm referencing those images that I've already drawn in the past. You know, we talk about building up our visual library, building up that thing that we can draw upon as as you know we uh, create images and and you know whether it's reading a book or watching a tutorial or something like that it helps give you a better understanding of of anatomy of where things are you know i remember watching um one of those exposés at the end of uh, a disney feature and watching the artists uh, draw and i was amazed and i thought to myself how am I going to freaking do that? How, how, oops, how am I going to be able to do that when I don't have the visual library and the context? Am I going to sit there and draw over my reference? No, basically what it is, is you build up that, that tool belt, that, that visual library that continually is evolving. And, um, you know, suddenly you realize, oh yeah, I remember how to draw an eye because I've drawn it like 50 times from reference, you know? So this right here comes up and comes here. I'm trying to get this wing position because the bird is actually using that wing as balance. You can see it uh, in the reference. So we'll drag the reference back down. You can see as he's putting his weight here and he's turning to the right, this wing right here is being positioned back to kind of balance himself. And he's using that front foot as an anchor because he's pulling. So a lot of times it helps me as somebody who's developing this illustration to put myself in the position of the bird. It sounds really ridiculous, right? I'm not a bird. I don't, you know, I don't have wings. I can't fly. But in the context of what I'm doing, it does help me uh, as an artist to help visualize if I was in this bird's position, what I would be doing. And a lot of times that's what we need to do. We, we get in here and we start, let's do this as I talk. There's that. I just want to get a couple of these things. Now, right now, the stick is too close. So let's do this. Okay, a little bit further down. <clears throat> okay. But it helps me really, let's do this, really feel the drawing. <clears throat> so let's have this, come here, and then we're looking, and it kind of fans out a little bit because it has a little bit of meat there. Actually, even this is a little bit too short. It's a little bit further. Down right to there. There we go. Okay. And we have that foot. Come here. And it fans 
like that a little bit. Good. And then we have the other part that you can't see. And it does help me to put, you know, these elements in here. Even like this element right here comes and wraps around. I can't see to the other side, but it does help me in the context of, of the form and how I'm trying to develop the illustration and the weight and the balance <clears throat> to put it and, and even to show it in the art. Okay, so now what I'm doing, you see these curved lines. I talk a lot about on my channel about thinking in three dimensions. You know, drawing on a 2D surface or even in this environment, I still have to think three dimensionally. So I'm thinking height, width, and I'm thinking depth. So this curve makes me understand that that feather grouping curves toward me. And as I come around, this feather grouping comes here. Okay. Go ahead and draw the eye in. Now this eye is fascinating because it, obviously it has a pupil and it has an iris, but everything is kind of dark and in shadow. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of value in there. And then you've got this socket area and this feather. And it looks like he's got a mullet, a little bit of a mullet. That comes up. Here's the center part. I've said on my channel numerous times, I love drawing birds. And I, I'm... I've you know asked myself why, I think probably because of the rhythm and flow of how their bodies, you know you have this head that flows into the body that flows into the feathers and the grace they have whenever they, uh, whenever they fly, and I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. So this is on the other side of his body. So now we come up here. It goes down a little bit. Now you see I've already established the roadmap and now I'm starting to put in a little bit more detail, but I'm still working on the gesture. They say the most important part of any good drawing is going to be the sketch phase. And I'm here to tell you that is the truth. You know, you get the sketch right, especially in the beginning, that kind of curves down a little bit then you won't have to fix things so much later. And that, you know, in our brains, that makes sense whenever we say it. But I think what happens is we get so giddy and we're so ready to move on to the details that we forget that if we start putting in details and let's say the placement of the eye is wrong or the placement of the foot is wrong and we don't catch that and we start focusing in on the minutia and all those details that eventually will fail. And even though failure is good, I think that, you know, whenever we're drawing, we want, we want things to look right. We want things to, you know, gel right and be balanced. Okay, so let's go ahead. Give a little bit of variety to this branch, even though it doesn't show that in the reference. I'm the artist, so I can do whatever I want. I want a little bit of variety. Let's go ahead and have a branch come up right here. And have it come around here. Okay, so let's look back at the reference. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm just going to put indicators, little indicators of things that help, again, help the form. You know, there is a rhythm and flow of this particular bird. He's got beautiful colorations. You know, even the beak is a little bit wrong because his beak is a little bit straighter. Let's go ahead and do this. And it kind of curves up and then it goes down. See, let's let's go back. Let's go back to our reference and then I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Oh, 
Oh, I'm gonna eat. Okay. Okay, so his beak goes up, then it goes down, kind of like your lip, and then it goes down again. So it goes up, down, and then it goes up again, and then down. So let's go back. So we went. So that's wrong right there. Pays to look at the reference, doesn't it? So it goes up, and it comes down, and it goes down. There's his nose. Where'd my reference go? F, F. Okay. So now let's look at his eye. Again, you see how I've, I've, this goes down and it comes up to his eye. So it goes down and it goes up to his eye. I've made his eye just slightly bigger. That's, again, that stylization that I talked about earlier. <laughs> And how I'm not a slave to my reference. And how I want to. Now what I'm doing is I'm just positioning some of the feathers. And I think what will help this right now is if I go ahead and I put in more value in his eyeball. Okay, comes up. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and do this, F, F, so let's go ahead and see if that has to work, yep, so let's do this, okay, that way I don't have to keep switching for you guys, you can see it, F, okay, Okay, so right now his eye is a little big, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it because it's my drawing. Okay, so now you see how this comes up and around. It's a big shape. So I'm going to do that real quick. It's a big shape, like right there. Yeah. And then we have this. Comes around, and you have these... Now what I'm doing right now is I'm looking for consistency and shape in his wings. So you have this large shape right here, and then it comes around to this other shape. So let's go ahead and do that. Here. And then it comes around. And you've got these secondary wings. So you have the up here, two, three. So one. Let's do this. One. Two. Okay. And let's look. These are real tight. So even though they're real tight. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And these, if you look, let's go ahead and you see how they taper. Let's go ahead and do red for you guys. They're going to come here. And you see how that goes? They're overlapping each other. So let's go down here. I drew on the wrong layer. It's okay. That's what's great about digital. Shh. Don't tell anybody I did that. We'll keep that between you and me. All right, so again, we've got that nice grouping right there. Go back to our reference, go back there, go back to our reference. So now we can go ahead and make sure we're on the right layer. Okay. Okay. Make the brush a little bit bigger. Again, we're in that broad sense right now. Whoops. So let's go back. Okay. And if you get lost and you're like, oh. Okay, so you notice how this goes here and then it comes to the front. See? It comes here. It goes like that. Okay. Here. And you're like, how can you see anything? Trust me. I see it. Here. Feather, feather. 
And then it kind of merges into his chest, right? You have different types of feathers. I'll tell you, there was a really cool documentary. Um, I believe it's on Discovery. It's about owls. You guys know that I love owls. Um, and the owl, certain types of owls, one of them, I believe, being the barn owl, and then there was a snowy owl, similar to Hedwig. They have different feathers that they employ whenever they fly. And it was, they were recording sound. And actually, they didn't, they didn't have any sound when they flew. Because the way the owl's wings are designed and how the airflow goes over them, they actually, um, it deadens the sound so much that you can't hear it at all. There's like no decibels when they come by. And that's one of the incredible things about you know these creatures you know different feathers for different things and how you know they develop and and different types of creatures have different attributes and whatnot and depending on their environment and how they hunt and it's just so fascinating okay right now what i'm doing is i'm putting in a little bit let's go and turn that taper off a little bit of shadowing and shading here. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not looking at the reference exclusively. I'm taking mental snapshots. It's like, I remember being in college, in junior college, and I had a wonderful teacher. He was an industry professional. He had worked for Disney and even at junior college. Um, and, you know, he was just really great. His name was Steve Marsh. And he, he, one of the really cool exercises we did uh, in figure class, what he would, ha he would, you know, let you look at the nude, because of course we had nudes. You took a snapshot of it, and then you had to turn your desk around, and you had to draw it based upon the mental snapshot that you had in your head. And after you were done, you turned around and you compared your drawing. It gave you an opportunity to really look at things in terms of shape, in terms of gesture, um, and it, it, it really, you know, taught me as an artist to really rely upon that mental snapshot, you know, <clears throat> again, remembering, uh, some of those exposés on the Disney, uh, you know, the videos and whatnot, and I would watch and I would think, how are they doing that? And again, that's that training, that visual snapshot, that, 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 uh, that mental, uh, you know, uh, recording mechanism in your head that records what you're seeing at that moment and then going back uh, and doing that. I highly encourage you to develop that aspect. And this, it, let's be honest, it ain't going to happen overnight. You know, what what really happens overnight is, is uh, few and far between. You know, you're not going to get a revelation of things happening overnight. It's going to happen one drawing at a time. And that's what you guys, you know, have to learn is this drawing thing, even though you see people on the internet that are absolutely insane, what you don't see are the hours and hours and hours of failure they have. I mean, just failure after failure and, uh, you know, bad drawings. They say, what is it, 10,000 drawings? I don't know if that's true, but I can tell you I've drawn a lot of bad drawings. I mean, gosh, just so many bad drawings. Um, and it's funny, you go back as a, as a seasoned veteran, and you look at some of the stuff, and some of the stuff you're like, oh, that looks pretty good. And other stuff you're like, burn it. That looks so bad. That looks so terrible. Um, because we change. Our eye changes in, in how we view the world and how we see things. And, and it just changes. So what I'm doing right now is just I'm, I'm putting in some of the, again, some of the value here and there just to kind of gauge and... and accentuating that form it looks like a like a huge convoluted mess but whenever you zoom out you can see obviously his eye is too big but I like it do this again make his head I'll make his eyes smaller by making his head bigger yeah okay so now what I'm gonna do Okay, so a little bit of a shadow underneath. Let's get rid of that taper again. A little bit of shadow underneath, a little bit of reflective light here. And you've got these, these 
tufted feathers, tuft feathers that, that really buffer that sound. Okay, and here's his back. Let's go and turn taper back on. Some of you might notice that I'm kind of getting back to basics. I'm kind of going back and, you know, I'm always one of those guys who is a firm believer in, in kind of going back and remembering certain aspects of my drawing um, repertoire and going back to basics. You know, the last video I did was drawing a cat. It seems really rudimentary. Hey guys, I'm drawing a cat. I'm not drawing a, um, you know, an anime character because that's, you know, what's popular on YouTube. You, people want to draw anime characters and, and, and stuff like that. And here I am drawing a cat. You know, for me, I have to maximize my time, but also, you know, show you guys that all these little drawings, every little drawing at a time, every warm up is something that you add to that tool belt. And me showing you guys and giving you guys insight that it's not, you know, all those anime and and really complex drawings are great. But what, like I said, what you don't see is all the hours and hours of putting in time like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn taper off. And look back at our reference. So we're going to go here, 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 there, there, there. A little bit of coloration. Okay, and all these little things to help again accentuate that form and make it make it pop I love this right here this is beautiful so you can do here a little bit more contrast and then you've got another one that comes off its mouth and then you've got this you see how I'm zooming out what I'm doing is I'm zooming out and I'm squinting my eyes and what that does is it makes everything a little bit blurry and then it puts things on a singular plane, it flattens things, but it also makes things, um, it, it defines the shadows a little bit better and also the silhouette. So you'll see me do that a lot. That's not really a tip or trick, it's just, you know, one of the things that I've developed as an artist to really help me look at shapes. You know, I'll, I'll blur, you know, I'll, I'll close my eyes and I'll squint. <clears throat> Uh, quite a bit, actually, <laughs> believe it or not, and it helps me. So let's go ahead and put in a little bit more of these little items here and there, and so on and so forth. This is a little bit more in shadow here, and then got some highlights in the bottom. Okay, that's more in silhouette. And this kind of curves around right here, and this will be the last thing that I do for you guys. It goes around, and yeah, it's a darker on the bottom. Okay, so that's kind of what I wanted to show you guys today. I didn't, you know, again, not getting into all the really hard, let's go ahead and do this, concepts, just getting in there and comparing, you know, the shapes and placement of things, uh, where things are, thinking about anatomy, you know, if you think about it, the anatomy of a human being is really, and then you think of anatomy of a of a of a bird, or the anatomy of uh, an alligator. You know, alligators have skeletons. They have vertebrae. They have arms. They have nails. They have shoulder blades. So, if you think about it in that context, learn anatomy of a human being, and then it translates really over to a cat, a bird, uh, uh, an alligator. Now, obviously, the proportions and the placement of things are a little bit different, but here, I'm going to show you what I'm doing here for a second. But all of those things will help you in the illustration. So let's go ahead and get rid of our reference. And then we'll go to filter. Gosh, and blur. Where did it go? Just a little bit of blur. And we're going to get a little bit of shadow. Let's do this. And it gives a shadow of him, placement. You see how I'm not going all the way to the edge like this? Because I've got that reflected light that's coming up from the bottom. Let me define that silhouette a little bit better. Yeah. 
And that's basically what I wanted to show you guys today. Sort of an insight into my process, my warm-up, and, you know, um, how I do things, you know. As an industry professional, I'm still learning. I'm still doing things that reestablish that foundation. And it sounds rudimentary, you know. Why don't you just go out and draw, you know, super hyper-realistic things and, and, and whatnot. Well, obviously that takes time. But also these things, these basic principles and observing pictures and drawing from life, all that goes into the tool belt. So whenever I actually have to go and do a hyper-realistic image, I've got all those things ready, you know, for the arduous hours that I'd have to do that illustration and lighting concepts and, and line and form and all those things. You know, principles to me are the bread and butter of uh, the illustration um, career and process. So hopefully you guys got something today. Please like and subscribe. You know, <laughs> I'm not trying to plead with you, but like and subscribe. If you like what you see, definitely share. Hit that notification bell because what happens is you hit that and then it goes out to everybody and all the views go up. And suddenly, you know, we've got a lot of uh, a lot of content on the channel and possibilities to where we can grow. So thank you guys and we'll see you next time. OK. Bye.